Good evening. It is the last day of July. Uh, so it's a Friday evening. It's about 8 o'clock-ish, a little bit before. Uh, tonight I want to talk about something that I think is is uh, pretty relevant for the different situations we're going on. Um, yeah, I, I think it's something that I've really been struggling to learn. Um, in, in life, we are faced with two reactions uh, to the problems around us. Really, two different two different reactions. And these two different reactions, they create two different mindsets. And those two different mindsets, it, it becomes a part of who you are. And it's a way of, it starts out as a choice, but then it just becomes kind of like programmed behavior. You can complain about what you don't have and what is out of your control, or you can enjoy what you do have and can control. Um, obviously, I'm not talking about controlling in the sense of uh, domination or tyranny. Um, a good example of something that you cannot control, uh, how other people feel. You, you, cannot, you cannot control how somebody else feels. Um, you cannot control how someone else acts um, or thinks. Um, you, you can't control those things. Um, people are going to have different opinions. Uh, they're going to have different personality. It's just going to be something that happens. You can't control what happens in the world. Uh, you can't control what's on the news. Um, obviously, you can control whether you listen or watch or whatever, but that's beside the point. Uh, you can't control what people feel very passionately about. You're going to know some people who are just really into something, and maybe you just don't care at all about that thing, but you really can't. You can't, you can't control that. Some people are going to have a strong opinion about what we should do about this or that, or whether people should do this or that, and you can't really control that. that. That's out of your control. All the things that are shut down that you can't do, there's another thing you can't control. There's a lot of things, because of things that are going on in the world, that you can't do right now. Um, you know, maybe you like going to see the movies, or, or maybe you like... Um, going to certain uh, zoos in bigger cities. Um, obviously, we, ours is open, but um, maybe you like going to one in a bigger city. And maybe you can't right now because of the different situations. And you can't really control that. The, the things that are shut down that you can't do, the things that you used to do, you can't control those things being closed. But I have a few ideas for what could help. Um, the first thing is learn to do something else. Learn to do something new. Well, we used to do this. I know, but you can't. So you can either focus on the fact that you can't do those things, or you can take this as an opportunity to learn to do something else. Something else that can be just as fun, just as, you know, family-oriented, whatever. Um, the thing is, is you have to th think outside of the box and maybe try things that you never thought you would try. Um, Another thing is you have to learn new habits. Um, let's say, for instance, that every uh, Wednesday you used to uh, go as a family to um, El Paso and you used to go to the El Paso Zoo and uh, do a walk down that Market Street, um, you know, and this was your every week on Wednesday habit or something like that, okay? Just roll with me on this. And obviously, most of those things are pretty out. They're, they're pretty much out for right now. But you can learn new habits, and you can learn new things to do. Excuse me. So what I'm talking about is learn to adapt to the problem, adapt to the problem, rather than complain that you have to deal with it. It's very common for us to say something like this, I shouldn't have to deal with this. And a lot of the times that we, here's the thing about that, a lot of the times that we say I shouldn't have to deal with it, you're absolutely right, you shouldn't have to deal with this. It's not fair. A lot of situations in life are not fair. And just pointing out the fact that something's not fair doesn't really do anything about it. It's not helpful. It, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how, how right you are about it not being fair. It's, that's still the way it is. Complaining about it doesn't fix it. Pointing out the problem doesn't fix it. And another thing about life is that everything is always changing. All the time. You, you either learn... See, sometimes you get blindsided by the change because... Instead of seeing the big, the bigger picture of what's happening around us, we like to focus on just the things that make us comfortable. Well, then something happens like what's going on right now in, in the world, and it kind of just blindsides us. 
and it kind of just breaks that that illusion of, of safety, that illusion of security, of just everything staying the same. It, it never was the same. We just allowed ourselves to believe it was the same. Like, for instance, we, we don't pay attention to the fact that we're always constantly aging. And then one day we look up and we're like, wow, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Um, so you either you either learn to adapt because things are always changing. So you either learn to adapt to the situation or you waste your time and your energy complaining about it. Now, either way, the situation is the same. It's just what are you going to do with your energy during that time? Jesus said, sorry, Jesus said in Luke chapter 5, verse 39, he's talking about, um, well, he's giving a parable. But at the end of the parable, he says this, Jesus says, no one who has had the old wine likes the new because they say the old is better. And so, obviously, I, I'm just kind of talking about the principle here. Um, some of the things that I would say that this applies to, I don't want to have to change. This is how we used to do it. I don't want to have to change. In my day, we did it like this. I don't want to learn, learn a new way. This is the way things used to be. I don't want. I don't want to have to work around the situation around me. I don't want that. I, I, I want to go back to how things used to be. Well, you can't. See, that's the problem is we've had the old wine and we say the old wine is better. But there's, there's, there's a different situation now and no matter how much you complain about it, how much you don't like it, that's a situation we're stuck in. So some more things you don't control. You, you don't control your lost loved ones. Sometimes you lose people in life and you're not ready to lose them. Sometimes something happens that, I mean, you're just not ready for those things. Um, the loss of your youth. <laughs> when you're a kid, you think you're, you're, you're never going to have problems. And then when you hit your 30, you're like, 30s, you're like, wow, I, I'm already showing signs of age. I wasn't supposed to show signs of age until I was like really old, like 50 or something. And it's just, you start realizing that 50 really isn't that old. <laughs> and then it just kind of, your whole mindset changes and you realize that you've lost your youth. Uh, sometimes you lose something, maybe something that you really cared about. And these are just examples of, of things that once you lose them, I mean, you can complain about losing it, but it's not going to fix anything. And see, that, that's the problem is getting past that old wine. The old wine is better. This is the way we used to do things. It was, it was sweeter then. I wish we could just go back, you know, back to the golden days, back to the good old days. Uh, for some of us, the good old days was like a year ago. So. <laughs> Uh, you have to learn to laugh, I guess. Um, but some things that you can control. And so this is the other side of that mindset thing that I was talking about. You can control your attitude. You can control your reactions. You can control what you say and what you post online. Maybe, I mean, this just happened to me today. I saw somebody post something and I, my, instant, my instant thought was, man, that was stupid. And then my second thought was, I need to tell them how they're wrong. But instead... I just closed down Facebook and moved on with my day. It's that easy. I mean, just move on. <laughs> um, when you focus on all the things you don't like, you act. You, you start acting uncharacteristically. You start becoming uh, angrier than you used to be. You start acting more short-tempered. Um, uh, you start acting in despair. And that eventually becomes who you are because it becomes repeated behavior. Now the problem is, is the situation that we're in right now is is very, um, very traumatic, very um, mentally challenging, and so it gives it gives a lot of different, um, a lot of, it's a lot different than the typical situations that we have to have to face in our regular weeks, and uh, lucky for us though the the things that uh, what, what we how we how we react is the same, so that's good. Um, when you are when you are facing excuse me <laughs> when you are facing uh, frustrating situations, respond well, and your outlook how how you how you how, how you think about things will change over time, and it will have a better effect on others and the situation. I mean, think about the the way that how you are handling this is affecting your children, how it's affecting your children's view of you, how it is affecting other people. Um, I mean, for instance, it, it's very discouraging in a, in a military kind of mindset or situation when there are people who are, you know, 
talking about, oh, how we're, we're, we're all going to die. You know, this is, it's very um, demoralizing. And so typically you don't want to have people demoralizing the whole group. And that's kind of how they do in military. And I think that the same thing kind of applies, you know, in, in life as a whole, you know, um, kind of demoralizing each other. Well, I, I've got to talk to somebody. And yeah, absolutely. I agree. You should talk to somebody. But maybe, maybe posting things um, that don't really uh, help um, either your situation or your attitude or other people or stuff like that. Maybe, maybe that's not the best idea. Maybe maybe your energy could be focused in a different direction. Um, maybe you could take that same energy and attention that you're giving to Facebook and, and the news and maybe turn just a little bit of that to the Bible. Um, maybe see, you know, uh, spend five minutes of that energy just in prayer. You know, it, it doesn't have to be anything real showy or, or, or perfect. But, it, you know, just maybe just that same time that you spend mindlessly scrolling on Facebook or watching the news, um, you know, it, it's funny. I, I, I posted something uh, two years ago talking about um, media and the news and whatnot, and I just thought it was so funny that now I'm saying the same thing, but now it sounds like I'm only saying it because of the stuff that's on new, on the news now. I've been saying this for, for years. And it's just, anyways... Um, so when you are facing frustra frustrating situations, learn to respond well to them um, instead of, obviously, bad. Facebook is too often a place um, to vent your frustrations, to tell people your disappointments or, and your complaints. I mean, think about the things that we post about on Facebook lately. Um, we're talking about either something with politics or um, something with, you know, oh, this is the latest news or whatever. Um, and it's always something bad. Um, or we post a rant about how this person did this, or this you know, it's just bad stuff. And remember that, that Jesus talked about from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, or the fingers type in this situation. And I think that sometimes we, we try to just get by on our own. You know, uh, we're in a very chaotic situation, so what do we do? Well, I can make it through. And we then we say, no, I can't make it through, I'm falling apart. But then we don't still don't see God, and it's like, well... It's a good opportunity for us to learn uh, dependence on God and trust in God in a way that we didn't before. Um, so don't let face Facebook become a place where you just vent. You tell people all your frustrations, all your disappointments, all your complaints. If, if you're going to do something, do it in a way that helps people. And, uh, and also learn to let things go. Just because somebody says something you don't like or you see something you don't like doesn't mean you have to stew about it. Just learn to let it go. Um, Maybe maybe learn to take breaks um, instead of, well, I'm mad at this person, so I'm going to block them on Facebook, the ultimate, you know, diss. Maybe instead of that, maybe just take a break off of Facebook for a little bit. Maybe instead of getting really worked up and upset about the situation with politics, do what you can. Vote if you want to. And then maybe turn off the news when they're, when they're, when they're talking about stuff that, that you've just had too much. Um, I'm not telling you you have to, you know, hide yourself from the world. And I'm, I'm not saying that, but maybe, maybe learn that your time is very valuable, and you shouldn't give it all to, you know, a situation that you can't really change. So, are you doing today what you would be proud to say that you did tomorrow? Talking about today, let me say that differently. Okay, <laughs> are the things that you're doing today something that you would be proud to talk about tomorrow? Yeah, I handled that situation well. Would you be proud to tell your kids about what, what you did today? Would, would you be proud tomorrow to tell your kids what you did today? Um, who are you becoming? You know, through, through the frustrating situations. Remember, we're always changing. It's just like everything's always changing. Who are you becoming in, during this time? Are you becoming someone who's worrying more, worrying less? Trusting God more, trusting God less. Becoming more angry, becoming less angry. You know, who are you becoming? Uh, what legacy are you leaving behind? What, what, what memory are you leaving behind? We live in, a, in an age where technology has really gone far. Well, if you were to die today, people would have the memory of, for instance, your Facebook account. And if they were scrolling through your Facebook trying to have memories of you, what legacy would they, would they find on your Facebook? Would they find something that was just very hateful? Would they find something that was filled with fear? Would they find something that was filled with hope? And uh, these are the things that we really have to ask ourselves. How, how will people remember you? 
what is this irritation revealing about you? As you as you look over the past three, four, five months, what have you have you noticed from yourself, not from everybody else? Oh, I've noticed that people are sheep. I've noticed that people are idiots. I've noticed it. Okay, hold on. That's not what I'm talking about. Now, reel it back in. What have you learned about yourself through this? I've learned that I have a bigger problem with fear than I thought I did. I've learned that I'm not very tolerant of other people. I talked about it a lot, but then when a situation came up, I really wasn't. I learned that I'm not willing to sacrifice my comfort for the better of, better of somebody else. Even if... <sighs> There's just a lot of things that could be said, and I hope that you that you stop and just think about this for a minute. What is this irritating situation or situations? What has it revealed about you to yourself, to others? Ha have you had people come to you lately and say, you know, you're always saying something negative. You're always complaining. Now, remember, they're going to be affected too. But, I mean, still, it, it's valuable insight, possibly. See, it's, it's, easy to be, it's easy to be loving, to be patient and tolerant when you aren't being pressed. But when you're in a situation that's very difficult to deal with, it's, it's much harder to be patient. It's easy to say, oh, I would be the world's best parent until you have kids. <laughs> it, it, it's easy to say, I, I'm a patient person until you have something that happens every single day, a constant irritant over and over and over again. You just kind of lose it. It's easy to say, oh, I love everybody until somebody just doesn't really agree with this and says it in a not very nice way. Um, so I hope that this, this has caused you to, to have something to think about. Instead of just having that negative, nasty attitude of, man, I wish I could just go back to the things, way things used to be, learn to just adapt to the situation. Learn to say, you know what, yeah, the situation has changed, but today is a great day. I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, I'm going to enjoy the, the weather. I'm going to just enjoy pe whatever I can with people or, or whatever, and I'm going to make the most of it today. Um, it, I mean, it'll, it'll get you a lot farther than saying, you know, oh man, I, I just, I just wish we could go back to the way things used to be. So I hope that that was helpful. I hope you have a great weekend, um, and we have uh, services this weekend. So I hope to see you there. Um, if you're not able to make it or you don't feel comfortable going out yet, that's fine. Uh, we have the services streamed online. So uh, okay, I hope you guys have a great weekend. See ya.